Gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. At 20 minutes before 8 Central Time, Professor Farrell... When I was a kid, I remember learning about Orson Welles' radio program, War of the Worlds. In 1938, CBS broadcasted an exciting radio drama about alien invaders destroying America. Unfortunately, the show was mistaken by many as a real news report, and in many places, pandemonium ensued. According to author Richard Hand, almost a third of the listeners thought we were really being attacked by aliens. Some thought they could smell poison gas. Many fled their neighborhoods. Even as a kid, I wondered why didn't those people just look out their windows? I couldn't believe that people would rather trust a voice over the radio than just check for themselves. Well, over 70 years later, Americans still have a hard time telling the difference between news and entertainment. When we hear about aliens in Arizona, some may believe what they're told, but not me. I'd heard the voices over the airwaves, but I needed to check this story out for myself. My first stop was a vigil in front of the Capitol in Phoenix. Hispanics protesting the controversial SB 1070 bill had been gathering there for months. We are putting this vigil here in order to get all together in our faith, to put ourselves in God's hands. We don't want this hate to keep spreading around the country, and we don't want this hate in our state. As undocumented people, we just want to have a working permit. Now, I don't pretend to be unbiased. Frankly, I'm a little wary of people who feign neutrality on incendiary topics like this. But as I spent time with these protesters, I began to feel more and more empathy for their plight. Oh, no, they want to come because they need the jobs. They need to support our family. If I was me, I would take all, all the walls, everything else, and I let the people, if they want to work here because they're making it here, sure. So what's the big deal? Mexicans want to find work, a better life? That's what all the fuss is about? We are immigrants. We are coming for, to make a good life. We are contributing to this economy highly. We, okay, all the food that we are putting in our tables, it was touched first for the immigrant. Then why we are going to punish them if they are coming to work and they are coming to contribute to the society? I met with the leader from the Minuteman Project, a controversial group of volunteers who assist local authorities in apprehending illegal aliens. Nobody realizes are, are getting bamboozled by everything, you know, between the coyotes, the drugs, the illegals trashing their property and destroying their, you know, their livelihood. Young Gun showed me footage of hordes of illegals crossing the border, and not just a handful, as I'd been led to believe. This was not a few peasants just looking for a side job. This tsunami of illegals was costing the state of Arizona billions every year and directly affecting Arizonans like Young Gun. I work construction and I, uh, I lose jobs to illegals even. So uh, a company comes in and outbids me because they're paying these guys at lower wages and so I, I don't even get the job, you know. And times are tough. I need those jobs. How is this possible? I mean, I hear politicians say that the border's secure all the time. Why is the federal government leaving our borders porous for anybody uh, to come in anywhere they want? If you knew anything about our borders, yeah. Yeah. you would know that that's not the case. Our borders are quite secure, thank you. I know. And, I, and I say this as, uh, again as someone who has, I've walked that border, I've ridden that border, I've flown it, I've driven it. I know that border, I think, as well as, as anyone. Do you think it's secure? And, and I will tell you, it is as secure now as it has uh, ever been. My, my course, question. Senator, please. Yes. I decided to see the border for myself. Three different points of the fence I chose at random.
as you can see, there's a little three to four foot post right there. I could just pop right up on that and just hop right over that fence. Easy. There's lights out here uh, at night, so you'd be able to climb that fence very easily. There isn't uh, hardly any Border Patrol activity here, as far as I can see down these roads. On our side, it, well, it's a little bare. We have a wall, but we don't have anybody patrolling it on a regular basis. And that's the issue. And uh, if we had people within line of sight, Border Patrol, um, it would be a lot better. And it's never going to be 100% secure. But when you don't have anybody in this area for long periods of time, people can come at will. In the middle of my interview with Mr. Ladd, we spotted illegal immigrants crossing in broad daylight. Ladd called in the Border Patrol, who promptly took off after them. An hour later, they radioed in to tell us the illegals we're in custody. I see these Normandy style barriers in the background here and this this river what is this river called? This is San Pedro River. It's quite easy to cross from from down south. The, uh, the border, the Mexican border is actually 20 feet behind us here and you can see maybe it's just to the uh, left of where those barriers are down there. I don't know if you're like me, but when I watch the news, I hear pundits and politicians telling me that the border is secure, Arizona's just racist, there's no way that people could be hopping back and forth between the border. By the way, I'm in Mexico. That's right. This is Mexico. This is what's standing between me and getting back into the United States. So I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it really is to hop through this ultra secure border. Now, I'm in America, just like that. When I saw the 13 foot fence, I was like, that's, that's bad, that's really bad. But I wasn't stunned, I am literally stunned when I see this. The problem is, is that they come here and they look at the border, they show them what the Border Patrol wants to show them. They'll have an entourage of people and show them all their latest equipment. Uh, but they don't bring them to places like this. They just don't. And when they do, there's an entourage of people ahead of time. They know they're coming. So they put on a dog and pony show. Whatever happened to, to the friendly, simple uh, immigrant, they hop a fence because they're, they're just looking for work. And this, this cartel-driven, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, how did this happen? These people have to hire somebody as a guide. It became so profitable that the mafias and the gangs decided that if it's that profitable, they'll take over the trails. It's the same trails they use for coke, coke and marijuana and everything else. Um, so they now it's a profitable thing. They got this, this thing called a rape tree. I don't know if you've heard about that. And basically what it is is the coyote or the leaders of these groups bringing these uh, legals to the desert when they stop to take their breaks or whatever, if they decide they want to rape your girlfriend, your wife, your daughter, or anyone in the group, you have no say so. As a trophy, they throw up their panties and bra onto these trees. And they have specific trees for each coyote, basically. So this guy has this many trophies, this guy, you know. So some trees are really covered, some trees just have a few. And that you don't hear about on the news or anywhere else. One night we, we uh, spotted a group of 41 and Border Patrol came in and processed them all and we helped them and one of the females in the group was 14 years old out there with a bunch of guys and who knows you know it's just sad. They have a group of, of immigrants or people that migrate through the border here. They call OTMs, other than Mexican. And it's a list that goes everywhere. Somalis, Pakistanis, um, two or three hundred a year that are caught. And there's probably, if the statistics are what the Border Patrol says they are, three times that many get in undetected. Those guys are high-value immigrants <laughs> to the smugglers. Mm. Uh, um, and they charge up to $7,500 just to get them to the nearest town. We're concerned about our own safety and care because those people are determined to get them to where they're going. Um, and a lot of the, the people that are bringing them are armed. Um, but really, it's a wide open door for anybody bringing anything into the U.S. and they got a three to one odds they won't be caught. 
uh, before they get to a major city. Um, so, I mean, you can check all the no-fly lists you want in the world with this door open. We're not, the country's not safe. Well, I'd certainly learned something. Politicians who claimed the border was secure were lying, or just willfully ignorant. Our border is wide open. Arizona loves legal immigration and legal imports. In Lake Havasu City, I witnessed one great example, the London Bridge. Yep, Robert McCulloch bought the bridge in the 60s and reassembled it brick by brick in Arizona. But these days, bridges weren't coming over the border. Crime was. Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano is under some pressure this morning to beef up border security after the murder of a rancher in Arizona. 58-year-old Robert Krenz was gunned down on his own ranch and police suspect he was killed by an illegal immigrant. He was a really good friend of mine. He was a really careful man. He stated in a taped interview, someone's going to die over this. Someone will be killed. He went to the aid of that illegal and was shot for his efforts. A human issue for those that have to suffer and their lands being trashed and run over and their homes being broken into, their loved ones being assaulted and killed. Yeah, it, this is a human tragedy, it's a human issue. Robert Krentz's murder sparked a firestorm of outrage, both in Arizona and across the nation. One month later, SB 1070 was signed into law by Governor Jan Brewer. Senate Bill 1070 represents another tool for our state to use as we work to solve a crisis that we did not create and the federal government has refused to fix. to win the future for our children and for our grandchildren. And I will not let circumstances or politics or what's popular define me. I had the fortune to catch Governor Jan Brewer giving a speech at a cattleman's dinner in Tucson. As the champion of SB 1070, she wanted to encourage her constituents who lived near the border, where the immigration war hit hardest. Have of all the illegal crossings occur at the Arizona border. And what's the president's response? He sues Arizona. And he posts warning signs on our lands, inside our state, some as close as 30 miles to Phoenix, telling our citizens to keep out. That's not protection. That's surrender. Good evening from New York. Just hours ago, the governor of Arizona signed into law an immigration bill that may, in practical terms, mandate racial profiling. It's remarkable legislation that requires police officers in Arizona to demand the paperwork of anyone they think looks like he or she might be an illegal immigrant. The concern I have about the law that they have passed is that I think it has the possibility of leading to uh, racial profiling. SB 1070 was a racist bill created by white supremacists, or so I'd heard. In liberal parts of Arizona, I saw hordes of posters comparing modern-day Arizona to Nazi Germany. And since a Rasmussen poll showed that 70% of Arizona's voters favor the bill, Arizonans must be racist, right? So what do you think of SB 1070 is it a racist bill uh, definitely not and the fact of the matter is is for us um, our mission is to secure the border do you think that the bill's racist I don't think the bill is racist at all I looked at some figures say over 62 percent of Arizonans are for the bill is Arizona racist or prejudiced Arizona is not racist or prejudiced we live in Flagstaff and I know people from all walks of life up there. I haven't met a single racist. What do you think about SB 1070? Um, I think it's a good law and it should be passed. No, I don't think it's um, inappropriate to prosecute undocumented workers. They're here illegally. It would be as if my visa expired in Europe when I was vacationing or working over there. I would be promptly deported. Do you support SB 1070? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, Keep the white man on top, right? No, not at all. So you're not, you're, wait, you're not a racist? No, not even. I thought everybody who supported SB 1070 was a racist. Uh, no. 
I was having a hard time finding racists here in Arizona. It seemed like everybody who supported SB 1070 seemed to oppose racism. So I decided to fall back to Plan B. I'd spend some time with the source of all racism, the source of all evil in the United States, what the media normally calls America's Taliban, the militia. So grab your clan hood and strap on some body armor, because it's about to get real. A report out this morning says anti-government and white racist militias are regrouping around the country. The Southern Poverty Law Center says it is in part a reaction to the election of America's first black president. A new report from the Southern Poverty Law Center argues they are evidence that the threat from militias and extremists is on the rise. The report says 50 new militia training groups have popped up in just the last two years. Gun and ammunition sales are skyrocketing. And right-wing extremists, historically motivated by a distrust of government, are now especially angry about the election of America's first black president. Now, this militia was headed into dangerous territory, cartel-infested parts along the border. My security advisors made sure I was wearing level four body armor, two levels higher than regular SWAT armor. The cartels primarily shoot the Steel Core 76239 millimeter, a penetrator round, and only level four can stop it. Just a couple of months ago, a sheriff's deputy in Pinal County was wounded by one of these very bullets. Yeah, we were on the right track now. Bearded guys with guns and camouflage, I could feel the hate in the air. Soon I'd have video proof that Arizonans were racist and just trying to keep the brown man down. Are you a racist and what do you think about that connotation? Me, I am actually the son of a German Jew. My wife is an African American. Uh, our three sons are all mixed race. If I was a racist, why would I spend seven and a half years in Southeast Asia as a missionary, raise my family over in a place that I was so racist against? But I personally wouldn't be involved in a, uh, in a racist organization. I don't stand for that. What I stand for is um, what the Constitution outlines and what I believe is a constitutional duty to act to preserve the uh, foundation of, of, you know, what this country was built on, and that's liberty. What do you say to people who say that uh, things like SB 1070 are racist? I say they're ignorant because they're just listening to what the mainstream media's propaganda is. So you're not some sort of uh, uh, racist uh, organization that's just hunting down people that aren't white? No, we're not a racist organization. I mean, I've got black friends, i got Hispanic friends, they've got white friends. I was starting to think that I'd been misled. That maybe this whole immigration debate wasn't about race at all. I mean, these guys weren't racist, and they were spending everything they had to do this. The cartels put out $5,000 bounties on each of their heads. They've been shot at. They were living in abandoned mines, for goodness sake. I slept in one, by the way, and it was less than comfortable. So you came all the way here from Missouri to risk your life uh, out here on this border. Uh, why? Because I felt it was the honorable thing to do. You know, they need help. I mean, if we need help there, I would expect people to come to help out. If not me, then who? So I'm not one to step back, stand down. Are you getting paid to do this? Is somebody uh, financing this? Uh, no, sir. This uh, most folks in this group are regular guys that have jobs they got to go to during the day or in the evening, whenever. And they do this as a volunteer. They pay for their own equipment. They pay for everything that they need to do. Why did you uh, choose to go the militia route instead of some other route? Well, first of all, the militia route is the constitutional legal way of an American citizen to defend their country. Second. Our government isn't doing it. I learned a lot out in the desert with these guys, most notably that they weren't the racist thugs I'd heard about on the evening news. I'm sure those types are out there somewhere, but they seem to be the fringe of the fringe. These were just everyday working Joes who were paying for all of this out of their own pockets. And even if it meant going broke or being demonized in the media, they were willing to sleep in mines and dodge bullets to defend their border. If you want something bad enough, you'll do it. And now, since the government's not doing it, and I want something bad enough, what I want is a damn job again. People go around demonizing the institution that helped found this country and its freedom. You know, the militia is what fought the British. 
and gained our independence. I'm a man. We got enemies out there who are going to attack our community. I'm a, I should be out there with the other men with my rifle to protect my kinfolk. You know. Now it's kind of you know, well, that's somebody else's job. You know, everybody always waits for somebody else to do something. But you know, today it's us that's doing something. You know, because we're the ones. We ain't waiting for nobody else. We're the ones, and that's why I'm down here now. But the concern I have about the law that they have passed is that I think it has the possibility of leading to uh, racial profiling. The governor of Arizona signed into law an immigration bill that may, in practical terms, mandate racial profiling. Police officers now have to stop you if they think you look illegal. Other than that, there won't be any racial profiling in Arizona because that, of course, would be against the law. The only time that SB 1070 mentions race is when it forbids racial profiling. But I wanted to get to the bottom of whether SB 1070 was actually racist in some other way or not. At the protest vigil in Phoenix, only a few activists could be interviewed. I was told that most of them could not speak English. Do you think that SB 1070 is racist? Yes, it is. Very racist. Have you read SB 1070? I read some of it, but I have a uh, ex-brother-in-law. He's American, blue eyes, just like you. So the police asked him for his um, ID, and he said, why? I'm just walking. I didn't do anything wrong. And the police said, well, I just want to see your ID. The officer said, these IDs are fake. This is Arizona's ID. Where do you bought them? But they are fake. Wait a minute. If her ex-brother-in-law, who's white like me with blue eyes and everything, was asked to show his papers, then doesn't that prove it's not about race? And after interviewing so many Arizonans who supported 1070 and none of them were racists, I decided to ask a better question. Do you think that undocumented workers should be prosecuted as criminals? No, no. Do you believe that undocumented workers should be prosecuted for breaking the law? I don't think so because they're really not breaking the law. So you do not believe that undocumented workers should be prosecuted? No, I do not. Suddenly, it all made sense. The argument wasn't about racism. It wasn't even about SB 1070. These protesters didn't want existing immigration laws upheld. The only action they supported was inaction. If you don't believe in prosecuting undocumented workers, then what do you suggest uh, to solve the immigration problem? We need a immigration reform, a comprehensive immigration reform. The system is totally broke. There is no way you're going to stop those drugs runners, those, those cartels, they will find a way to make it up here. If SB 1070 is not the answer, then what do you think is the answer to the immigration problem? What is the answer to the immigration problem? Well, if the president sit down with all the, all his, the people is around him, and they really talk about it, he can make it, I mean, he can do it. He can pass the bill and just talk about it and see what they come out with a really good uh, solution for this problem. To me, it seemed Arizona was between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, the federal government had failed to secure the border, but continued to falsely proclaim that it was secure and was now promising to sue Arizona for passing SB 1070. On the other hand, state legislation had yet to be enacted the crime continues to escalate, so who stands up for the people of Arizona in the meantime? The sheriff is a constitutional office. There are 15 counties in the state of Arizona. There are 15 elected sheriffs. Uh, so we, we work directly for the people and kind of illustrate that. I, you know, I had a guy in my office one day that came from east of the Mississippi. He was out here, he had a problem, and, and I wasn't satisfying him. He said, I want to talk to your boss. I want to, I want to know who I can talk to who's above you that, that tells, gives you directions and tells you what to do. So I just went over to my desk and I got the phone book. And I plopped it down in front of, uh, of him on the table and I said, call them all or just one or two. They're all listed right in there. That's the Cochise County phone directory. That's who I answer to. Those are my bosses. Arizona sheriffs are famous. 
Sheriff Paul Babu has called the federal government the enemy of Arizona. The cartels have put out a million dollar contract on Sheriff Joe Arpaio, and Deputy Louis Peral was recently shot by illegals in Pinal County. These sheriffs are tough, and they're doing what they can, but even they can't solve the border problem. Arizona would simply have to wait for SB 1070 to take effect. The day before SB 1070 was supposed to go into effect, a federal judge eviscerated the immigration law that mirrored existing federal law and was supported by 70% of the state's voters. SB 1070 would go into effect, but it would be missing key elements, such as law enforcement ability to check the immigration status of criminals. It would no longer be a crime for illegal aliens to seek work here and immigrants would no longer be required to carry their papers. In yet another twist in the SB 1070 saga, today a federal judge stalled the bill. I'm here at the Capitol where controversy and protests have swept Phoenix again. Who are you and what are you doing? I'm Janet Contreras. I'm running for Congress in Arizona's 4th District. It's been a long time uh, Democratic uh, majority district. It looks now like things might be tilting towards the conservative, and a lot of that has to do with the Tea Party influence. Do you support SB 1070? I do, wholeheartedly. I did from the beginning, and I will continue to do so. Why are you such a racist? <laughs> well, you would have to ask my Mexican children why I'm such a racist. I married a, a man that immigrated here legally from Mexico. We raised five children together. What, what's your take on the federal judge's ruling today about 1070? Is it true that 1070 is uh, pretty much gutted? Not at all. In fact, Sheriff Joe has every intention of doing the same thing tomorrow that he did yesterday and the month before that and next month as well. I'm only a few blocks from the Capitol and I have found something truly stunning. Uh, it's very rare that I find something this ironic. I can only show it to you. If you look behind me, you will see up on this structure, there are a couple of people who have illegally hung a banner protesting SB 1070, which bans illegal activity. So they're illegally protesting a law that outlaws illegal immigration. Below the crane, I met an older African-American man who'd been watching for some time. I asked if he knew why the protesters were doing this, to which he replied, who knows why they do what they do? They got what they want and they're still breaking laws. I suppose you support SB 1070, I asked. Of course, he replied. It's the law.